gasoline, or as scientists call it, dinosaur pee pee. <laughs> Over the past few months, global demand for oil has kept rising faster than the supply, to the point where the price of gas in the United States is now six billion dollars a gallon. <laughs> so drivers are hurting. The good news is that, as always, President Biden wants to help. The bad news is that, as always, it doesn't look like he can. The president this afternoon called on Congress to temporarily suspend the federal gas tax, which is right now about 18 cents a gallon. It's a move President Biden has resisted until today, given that it is unlikely to pass Congress. While officials say a gas tax holiday is worth considering, there is a cost. Those funds are used for repairing roads and infrastructure, important priorities across the country. What the president wants is a three-month gas tax holiday on both regular gas and diesel uh, going into September. He also wants states to pass their similar versions of that gas tax holiday. The president also had a word specifically here for the oil companies. Here's what he said. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you are paying for the product. Do it now. Do it today. Why are you talking like that? Is this a secret? Should the rest of us be listening? Why does he do that thing? It's so strange. Like, Joe Biden's the only president whose vibe shifts in the middle of a sentence. Oil companies, you better lower the prices. Please. Please, I'm begging you. If you're president, you just gotta say things. Otherwise, it makes you look weak, you know? You can't be like, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall if you get around to it. <laughs> it's such an ugly wall, or at least paint it. Come on. <laughs> and you know, I feel like this is the big difference between Trump and Biden, you know? It's how they use their power. Because with Trump, it was always like, ah, oh, shit, is he gonna use his power? And with Biden, it's like, ah, oh, shit, is he gonna use his power? <laughs> also, whoever decided to call it a gas tax holiday, that person should be fired. It's not a holiday. What does that mean? It's a gas tax holiday. No, just be like, we're not charging gas. It's a gas tax holiday. That's the worst holiday of all time. <laughs> what, you save 18 cents off of gas and I still have to go to work? Are you shitting me? <laughs> Even Arbor Day is better than that shit. <laughs> and this is what always confuses me about this country, right? Everywhere in the world, governments manage to protect their populations from corporate greed. Right? Like, South Africa will limit how high bread prices can go. The EU will be like, you cannot pump chickens with the same hormones they use in the Hulk. In China, <laughs> they're like, crypto's done, and no more dancing on TikTok, only homework. <laughs> but whenever the American government has to deal with corporations, they've got about as much power as a tortoise that's stuck on its back, you know? It's just like, come on, oil companies. <laughs> come on, pass on your savings. Drug companies, don't overcharge for life-saving drugs, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> but still, this is good news for Americans. Instead of the gas tax going to maintaining roads and infrastructure, drivers will now save 18 cents per gallon. And then you can use those savings to buy a new car after yours gets swallowed up by a pothole. <laughs> but let's move on to a different problem facing practically everyone in America, gun violence. There have been many mass shootings in America over the past couple of decades. And after each one, people have always said, maybe this time will be different. Maybe Congress will do something about this. And every time, Congress was like, no. But <laughs> ever since the mass shooting in Buffalo and Uvalde last month, a group of senators from both parties have been working together to see if they can find any common ground on gun reform. And it turns out this time is different, ever so slightly. This morning, after decades of partisan gridlock, a major breakthrough in Congress, 14 Republicans joining all 50 Democrats to advance a new compromise on gun restrictions. This is a breakthrough. And more importantly, it's a bipartisan breakthrough. The deal includes enhanced background checks for people between 18 and 21, closing the so-called boyfriend loophole, preventing romantic partners convicted of domestic violence from buying guns, directing more money for states to implement their own plans to address gun violence, and billions for school security upgrades and mental health services. And Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell calls the deal a common-sense package of popular steps that will help make these horrifying incidents less likely while fully upholding the Second Amendment. 
Oh, I agree with Senator Mitch McConnell. Thank God the precious Second Amendment has been preserved. Oh, yes. I mean, I'm all for protecting kids, but the Second Amendment, oh. Have you seen that little face? Have you seen it? Whose Second Amendment are you? Whose Second Amendment are you? Oh, you're so, so adorable. Sometimes I feel like Americans want to protect the Constitution more than they want to protect the Americans the Constitution is supposed to protect. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, I'm glad we could protect the Second Amendment. I'll tell you now, if the Second Amendment was in that classroom in Uvalde, the cops would have bust the door down with Mitch McConnell right behind them. You rip your car, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> and I will say, look, I know for a lot of people, it can be hard to know how to feel about this deal because it doesn't include a lot of things that people want. You know, it doesn't ban assault rifles. It doesn't raise age limits. It doesn't even do universal background checks, which is the most basic thing imaginable. So for some, this kind of thing, you know, feels like trying to stop Godzilla by dropping a few mouse traps around the city. <laughs> but on the other hand, on the other hand, after three decades of nothing happening, this deal is something. Please remember that, it is something. It's not gonna solve everything, but it's something. And something is always better than nothing. That's the entire philosophy behind the hand job. <laughs> All right, let's move on. If you've been out in New York City over the past few years, especially pandemic and through it, you've probably noticed a wild new phenomenon. And no, I'm not talking about how the stuff dripping from air conditioners doesn't taste as good as it used to. <laughs> Which, no, it really bothers me. It used to have like a flavor. It had a tang when it would like fall in your mouth. You'd be like, mmm. <laughs> no, the problem I'm talking about is the squads of dirt bikes and ATVs flooding the streets and sidewalks like Trump supporters trying to find Mike Pence. <laughs> Well, now, the mayor of New York City has decided to crush this problem, literally. Today, heavy machinery crushed illegal ATVs, dirt bikes, and motorcycles confiscated by the NYPD. Mayor Eric Adams waved a checkered flag and work began. He said this effort was to ensure these vehicles cannot ever terrorize the city again. The NYPD says that it has seized more than 2,000 of these vehicles citywide, an increase of more than 80% from this time last year. Hell yeah! baby crush those bikes that's what i want from my city government yeah i don't even care about the underfunded schools anymore because this shit rocks <laughs> by the way why is he waving a checkered flag at the beginning of a race <laughs> does he not understand how a race works <laughs> the guy in the truck is like i, I finished already <laughs> now look i will admit as a new yorker humble brag Maybe this isn't the biggest problem the city is facing right now. You know, rents are driving people out of their homes. Traffic is always bad. And the subways are always shutting down. Because I, I think we have trains that are scared of the dark or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think that's what it is in New York, you see, because they, they're fine, and then they go into a tunnel, and then they're just like, ah, 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 you guys should walk. I don't know what to do. This is scary. <laughs> In fact, instead of crushing these bikes, maybe the city could have used them to solve some of the city's problems. You know, I mean, this could have been the solution to the subway problem. Instead of those trains that are always breaking down, just drop a bunch of dirt bikes into the tunnel, you know? <laughs> yeah, let people wheelie to work. Or give them to the police so that they don't have to ride horses anymore. What are you doing, stopping crime in the 1850s? <laughs> huh? There are cattle rustlers on Broadway. <laughs> or just hire the dirt bike kids to ride around neighborhoods where the rents have gotten unaffordable. Help keep the prices down. The studio apartment <laughs> with no bathroom. You want it? You want it? It costs $6,000 a month. What? <laughs> All right, give me 50 bucks. You can have it. <laughs> All right, and finally, if you're one of those people who really likes to vape, well, first of all, congratulations on being basic. <laughs> and second of all, you might want to stock up because your supply is about to run out. One of the uh, largest makers of e-cigarettes may soon be forced to stop selling its products in this country. The Wall Street Journal says the FDA could order Juul e-cigarettes off the market as soon as today. The FDA has criticized Juul for gearing its products toward young people. It already barred the sale of fruity and sweet e-cigarette cartridges. Juul had hoped to continue selling tobacco flavors. It can appeal if the FDA does hand down that ban as expected. 
That's right, people. Juul e-cigarettes are about to be banned, so your days of going around looking like you're blowing R2-D2 are over. <laughs> but this is a big move by the FDA, because you realize Juul is the iconic vaping brand. So by them doing this, it's like going off to soda by banning Coke, or going off to Coke by banning Don Jr. All right, that's it for the headlines. But before we go, let's check in on the traffic with our very own Roy Wood Jr., everybody! <laughs> What's happening, Roy? Good What's to up, see man? you again. You doing, yeah. you doing good? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Now, I know we want to get to the traffic, man, but that, that, that brings up a good point. Am, am, I, am I supposed to be excited about 18 set? Off of gas? I, I guess they want you to be excited. I, mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't feel like that's a lot. I'm sure 18 cent off. I'm sure that's a lot of gas. Where you from? I'm sure that's like a lot of gas. Well, because I'm from I'm... Africa. <laughs> you said it, not me. L this is the thing. <laughs> like I, I feel like 18 cent. It's like it's a nice gesture, but it ain't really doing nothing. It's like when your grandma still give you ten dollars for your birthday, and I'm like, I'm 43. What am I gonna do with these ten dollars? <laughs> this ain't even a sandwich. Say even a day. Oh, you looking at me, you want me to do the traffic. I, here, here, you, you know where to fix this traffic? Yeah. Cause like, perfect thing about the gas, right? Yeah. All right, so gas is up cause everybody consuming gas, right? Okay, yeah. People consume gas cause they stuck in traffic, they ain't really moving. What gives you good gas mileage? Motion, the car moving. So the way you get to fix the traffic, all green lights. <laughs> every light, every intersection in America, green light, same time, traffic move. I think that would what create another problem, though. What's the problem? Because what, 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 what? if it's all the green lights, then, like, the cars are probably gonna smash into each other. Even better. <laughs> Even better. The car smash, your car don't run, now you walking, saving gas. You understand? <laughs> it's how it works. I mean, all green lights. All right, look, well, um, Ooh, look at all these motorcycles. Why we didn't just sell motorcycles to these people? What, what country is that even? I, I don't know a country with traffic. I, I don't understand. <laughs> Why, why would the city of New York not just sell the bikes? The police love to put stuff out and then just tear it up. Man, you could have sold them bikes for parts. You could have took them to another country or some shit. Man, why would you get rid of the bike? I bet you they ain't even siphon the gas out them bikes before they crush them. <laughs> it's messed up, man. That's a lot of money. I'm from wait. Alabama, man. I'm from Alabama. The police down there, they do something called a police auction. The police take your shit, and then once every two, three times a year, they just have a yard sale, and they just sell everybody's stuff. And that's how you make a little bit of bread. You don't burn the stuff up, man. Like, when they be burning the, the drugs, they be burning up the drugs. Why would you burn that cocaine? <laughs> oh, that good cocaine, man. You could bag that up. You could take that down to Knoxville, holler at Big Mix. He got two plugs from the Salvadorians. We can get that. <laughs> that shit, if you cut it the right way, you can get a couple extra dollars and stretch that. Uh, Roy, Roy, you're gonna incriminate yourself. Let's, uh, let's jump to the traffic. That's my bad. That's, yeah, that's, let's that's just jump to the bad. traffic. You know where the jewel people messed up? <laughs> the jewel, the jewel cigarette people. Yeah, see, where did they mess they up? They tried right? too hard to sell to children. You can't just go right at the children. That's what happened to Joe Camel. That's why they got Joe Camel out of here. You remember Joe Camel? You remember the Camel cigarettes they had to do? I remember in the sixth grade, everybody either wanted to be Michael Jordan or Joe Camel. That's who you wanted to be. It was a camel. He had shades. He had a leather jacket on. He had a white woman on his arm. I was like, that's the man. Also, also the, the thing with Jewel, man, it's, it's the people who smoke e-cigs. This they fault. Y'all had all this time to normalize e-cigs, but every time they, you ever seen somebody pull an e-cig out, they look weird. They just reach all in the coat. <laughs> and they put it back down. Then they look at the floor when they're hitting it. Why are you looking at the floor? Look up at me. That's, a, that's addiction behavior. You don't look down at the... <laughs> Smokers look you in the eyes. Smoke it. Also, when people smoke a cigarette, they don't smoke in the center of their mouth. You gotta, this is cool. You gotta smoke in the corner of your mouth. You don't smoke nothing in the... This is crack pipe. You don't, this is crack pipe. This is cool. This is meth. And that's why people be tripping on them jewel cigarettes, man. You can't be... You won't look cool you smoke around the corner. I, I hear you there, man. I hear you there. I'm just... Man, there's some nice traffic, man. Well, you, what, what, do you, what do you want me to say about the traffic? Well, uh, like people, just, uh, people like every watching the week, news. Every yeah, week, because people what like do you watching, want me to say? The people like want to know what roads to drive on. D not this one. Don't drive on this one. You know what? All right, because thank you so cars. much, Roy. 
Thank you, Lord Wilson Gale.